Greetings YouTube. Previously I've made a couple of videos exploring the D6 USB interface simple spectrum analyzer. In this video I add an external attenuator, a shielded case, and a tap on the voltage controlled oscillator inside of the D6 to add FM modulation capabilities to it. In order to reduce the RF signal level, I was able to salvage an attenuator from a dead HP 8660C signal generator. And it connects to the output of the voltage controlled oscillator, the, the tracking generator, via the SMA connector. This attenuator has latching relays, but requires a differential voltage to set or clear the relays for the attenuation levels. This is easily handled with a couple of alligator clip wires and a small 12 volt battery. You touch the ground to the case and then tap the positive to the feed throughs to set the attenuation, or you put the positive to the case and then tap the feed throughs to clear the attenuation. I found that this sort of worked, but I was still getting too much RF leakage from the open circuit board of the D6 directly radiating into my receiver under test. So I figured I needed a RF shielded case. I constructed a clamshell case out of some sheet aluminum for the D6. Now since the attenuator is considerably bigger and heavier than the D6 and the homebrew aluminum case, I mounted the shielded case to the attenuator and then used a piece of the salvaged semi-rigid coax from in the HP to make the signal connection. Not only did this correct the leakage issue I had, it made a big difference in reliably reducing the power level. I was able to get the power level down in the 120 minus 120 dBm range to generate a noisy signal for testing a uh, receiver and seemed to be uh, working pretty good for my applications. Now making this shielded box was an adventure for me. I don't have a lot of metal fabricating experience nor do I have the proper metal working tools. In the past, I've bought new cases or repurposed other boxes, but this was my first case just from a straight sheet of aluminum plate, and it was salvaged also. It's not pretty, but the shield does the job and helps the attenuator for getting a low signal into test receivers. Now, one of the things that I thought was uh, probably the most useful feature that this device did not have was the ability to generate an FM test tone. I found in looking at design of the ADF4351 PLL, which is the primary uh, frequency generator for this unit, it actually has two of them, one for the tracking generator and one for the frequency uh, setting of the spectrum analyzer. Yeah, couldn't think of that word, spectrum analyzer. The uh, phase detector of the 4351 feeds a filter, and then that filter feeds the VCO input pin 20 of the ADF4351 for the VCO. I removed the top shield to expose the chip and trace the pin out, and turns that turns out there is a bottom accessible trace with two via holes that looked like it was just made for adding FM to the D6. Well, I did a little experimentation and found that the PLL does not like strong voice audio. It, it seems to cause it to go off frequency by the changing of the bass and treble uh, as your speech gets processed into the VCO, and then you end up getting a crunchy signal. But sine wave tones didn't cause a problem. Now it always needs a blocking cap so you're not going to be pulling your uh, control voltage off. I tried one microfarad and it seemed a bit too much. I tried a point one, just uh, one of the ones out of my uh, parts box, and it worked pretty good. You could probably use a 0 0.047 or even a 0 0.001 microfarad. That would probably work well also. You also need a little series resistance. 1K was a good value in my test. So I want to try using dual mono. Now I'm not going stereo here. I'm using dual mono in order to 
be able to generate multiple frequencies at the same time. So what I did was I used two 2K resistors in parallel to mix left and right channels from uh, my signal generator and my PC. Then the isolation capacitor for it. And I used a repurposed headphone cable to get uh, the left and right channels from the headphone jack of my PC. And then connect the shield of this cable to the D6's ground. I installed this on the bottom side of the board I wired it up ahead of time and then put little insulating tape underneath the board to keep the components from shorting against the ground trace. Then I used a couple of pieces of steel wire to hold the cable in place. And this, this wire was just some salvaged resistor leads. And a little bit of glue to uh, make sure everything stays in place. Now you're probably thinking, well, why stereo? Why dual mono? Well, it won't generate uh, a stereo signal, but if you're doing two-tone tests and if you have a signal generator program that will uh, allow you to generate uh, one frequency in your left channel, one frequency in your right channel, that's where this all becomes really wonderful. So with this, I'm just going to stop this video. Stay tuned for part two when I introduce you to the sound card oscilloscope and signal generator by Christian Zietnitz. So at this time, 73s, this is N3SDO.